Je, je m'attendais à une référence de ce genre-là. Mais bien sûr, bien sûr. on the Golf de Morbihan testing a goat island skiff and once again it seems whenever I do a boat test it's beautiful weather even in winter look at this it's very nice just being sailed around, not having to worry about the navigation. So I can just lie back and watch the scenery. I don't know why I don't do this more often. It's sort of having a chauffeur. Don't you think it's like having a chauffeur, Emmanuel? Emmanuel was saying, we have a friend, Marco, yep. who says that at the second coming of Jesus, it's the noise of espresso coffee going blah, 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 and then you know. Okay, oui, oui. Okay. The Goat Island skiff is very different from my lure. It's very light and very much a performance boat. But it's fast and light and sporty, even though there's not very much wind. Michael Strover, who designed this boat, he likes really simple craft, flat bottomed, very light, very straightforward boats. And then with a huge, ability, I want to speak French, I go on puissance, um, a huge ability to sail fast. This boat will play, this boat will do 11 knots on the play, and that's the, the really big difference between this and Annie Lure. This boat though, Pierre has added all sorts of things which doubtless um, Michael Strawman disproves of, including a bowstring behind you. Uh, and some of these, the, the um, centerboard is different. It should have a dagger board, according to Michael. So it's not quite as light and simple as as Michael would doubtless prefer. This is the, um, this is the problem of being a boat designer. No one ever follows the plans. It's very nice. And, uh, Responsive, really responsive. I like this simple balanced lug rig. Control lines all come very nicely. And <laughs> oh dear, 
<laughs> it's so different from the new law. It's fun though, boy. It's very nice, very light, very... The simplicity is, is compelling. Michael Storer reckons these are as fast as a laser, despite their uh, simple balance lug rig. There's a load of rocks just up there called the pigs, les cochons, which um, we'll endeavour not to run into. What happens if I sit, if I sit down in the boat? Let me try that, is that worth the risk? These are boat rollers that uh, the air has put in so you've got something to lean against. They also obviously work as boat rollers and also as comfy as comfy seating. They're again not part of Michael Storer's original design, but I have to say, uh, something to lean against, they're very pleasant. You can get used to it. It's quite gives you a great deal of confidence. And a boy, well, he had a cochon aussi, on, on dry vite les cochons. Do I like it? It's got a very, very pleasing simplicity about it. Um, the, the flat bottom bangs, you get this dum 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 noise, which you, you don't get in the lure. But that's, uh, yeah, that's the flat bottom boat effect. The, the sail stands, this balance lug sail stands so sort of rigid as it were that, that you can be well off the wind or too close to the wind. It doesn't really give you the feedback. You've got to pay close attention to, to your sheeting angle the whole time. A bit later we'll try the, um, the asymmetric, but uh, that's not a Michael Storer thing. That's something Pierre has it's put on. Il est plus rapide que le Silmaril, n'est-ce pas? Bon choix, Pierre! <laughs> We're easily leaving that uh, Silmaril behind, though. As well, actually, we ought to, but we're nowhere near as long. We're lighter, but... Yeah, it's interesting. These are fast. We will tack. There you go. Forgotten what you do with tiller extensions when you tack, something like that. You meant to hold them like this, but it's too much that hard work. I'm going to hold it like that. So we've avoided them valve cochon and with these rocks. I can't see them anymore, they're somewhere over there. I think so. Oh, there's the only just actually, there's the cardinal mark. <laughs> oh well. We hit, oh no, they're there. <laughs> Straight ahead. This is what happens when you talk to the camera rather than worry about where the rocks are. Passing inside the cochon, glad to hear. Well, the intention is that we pass inside the cochon anyway. Okay, just over there. local oyster boats coming past. Oysters is a huge industry in France. There's just oyster beds everywhere. The French just love their oysters. It's quite a strong tide against us. We're going to tack again. to make sheets. It's like riding a, a thoroughbred steed. You sometimes think it's it's a faff going sailing. <laughs> it was 
I was in the middle of all sorts of things before before coming here. Emmanuel suddenly rang me up and I was in the middle of working on my house and it really was a, a bad moment to to come sailing in, in all sorts of ways but when you get out on the water just the what is it about it? Why is it why is it why is it so calming and I don't know something in the in the simplicity of it, in the the directness, particularly in a little boat like this, absolutely direct direct relationship with the with the wind and the waves and the and the sense of being out here that I can I can hear the birds just sounding on the shore. A little just a so we'll be able to creep past here, you think, without uh, without it knocking our centreboard up. I have to say if I if I had this boat I'd do what uh, I'd do exactly what Pierre has and have a centreboard. I know daggerboards are simple, but if you're if you're going to creep along close to rocks like this, actually we're we're going to tap. Yes, I'm still turning, looking the wrong way. I should look forward with the centre main sheet, but it's just so it's so uh, so weird for me to do that. That'll do. That'll do. We'll try it, come on, we're going to try, we're going to try looking forward, see what happens. It's that bit. See, I don't understand. There's that bit when you've... It's when you have to pass the tiller behind your back. That's the funny bit. It doesn't seem right. So I think it's time we tried out this Code Zero, this spinnaker. It's uh, a second-hand one that Pierre bought, and I'm not at all certain how you set it, but fortunately I think I'm going to have some help. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Pierre's come on board to help me set the sail so I don't embarrass myself in front of all the sailing school boats over there to starboard. Alors, si jamais il part trop, c'est la grand voile qu'il faut lâcher. Ah oui, c'est la grand voile qui fait chavirer en fait. Qu'est-ce que se passe avec les les taquets ici Ça, c'est pour ça. Hop, quand tu es tout seul. Ah, le côté. Ah voilà. Voilà. Quand on est tout seul, tu peux pas l'avoir en dessous parce que dès qu'il penche, le bateau est. Yes. Alors, tu veux le mettre de quel côté Peut-être en tour. Voilà, je vais maintenant. Ok, je vais, je vais. Comme ça, voilà. Ah, très bien, ça c'était rapide. Il n'est pas bien passé là. Ah, c'est le problème de l'équipe. Bowsprits are no longer considered old fashioned. Most modern racing boats have them and set a sail that's now called a Code Zero, an asymmetric spinnaker that's set from the end of a bowsprit extending out far in front of the boat. Yeah. 
Look at that. See. Coming along. I'm talking to the public, the grand public. Salut grand public. <laughs> Et là, normalement, on va plus vite que Manuel. Yes. Alors après, je m'amuse des fois. Je ne sais pas si c'est arrivé. Ah oui. On perd du cerf volant. D'ailleurs, on double des catamarans. Hein. Ouais. Yes. Oh, no. yes, this is the advantage of the um, of the Code Zero, of the spinnaker on a running boat fit in these light winds like this. In my boat, I'd be pretty well stopped. Just this is almost doubling the sail area. This really lifts the boat along in these in these light winds even though there's a lot of extra complexity in the boat. We're um, burning off Emmanuel over there very uh, convincingly. Even though he's all alone in a boat that's actually longer. Say you go, don't make me wait. 